Welcome to the Probate Realtor Show, your one source for selling and buying real estate through trust and probate. Hear directly from the best attorneys and trusted advisors on how executors and administrators navigate the probate process in and out of court. Being a personal representative or successor trustee can be a daunting task, and often beneficiaries don't have a clear plan. Let us help you make the right decision for your clients, your family, and your legacy. And now, here's your host, the probate realtor himself, Matias Baker Mazzucci. Welcome, everybody, to another exciting episode of our show. Today, we are dealing with a very, very important topic in the world of trust and probate real estate, and we are talking to we're talking to Marty Stevens Hibner. Marty, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here, Matthias. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. And let's get right started and uh, to explain to our audience, I guess you know your company's name, Clear Home Solutions, mm-hmm. and um, so. First, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, can you explain to us a little bit what Clear Home Solutions is and what it does? I think the clearest way to say it is that realtors take care of the home and the structure and the property and that sort of thing. We take care of everything inside the home, inside the shed, inside the attic or the extra storage units that people may have. And we offer move management services top to bottom, beginning to end, uh, estate sale services, also home inventory services. Sometimes you have people who are splitting up or you know, after somebody passes, you have battling beneficiaries. So this way right. if there's an inventory, it can be dealt with a little, there's a list of everything and people can divvy that up. So yeah, we also do downsizing for aging in place since we work primarily with older adults and their families. And so there are a lot more people wanting to age in place instead of moving to communities, at least until later, much later in life. That makes sense. Great. Um, thank you so much for explaining that. Um, let me ask you a question. So the, how does it work, the step to, the, the step-by-step process? Kind of like walk me through an, a, a scenario of when somebody reaches out, let's use, you know, the world I, I am in, you know, the 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 probate real estate world, you know, they've experienced the loss. Maybe the children are from out of town and the house, you know, it's filled with, you know, a lifetime of memories and a lifetime of things. Um, so what is the first step that that you kind of like after the initial reach toward you? Um, what do you, how do you, what, how do you guide your clients? Well, as you know, Matias, there's no, if you've met one client, you've met one client. Right. <laughs> Everything is True. different. True. But to give you an idea, uh, for one thing, especially if they're, let's say, moving to an assisted living community, we mm-hmm. will do a floor plan for them. Right. Uh, and by the way, it starts with a free consultation and estimate. Okay. And that is never set in stone. People work with us as much or as little as they need and want to. Okay. But we offer floor planning services. So we'll know where everything goes on move day. Mind you, there are always some tweaks, but mm-hmm. it makes it a lot more efficient. We also, we bring on different vendors. So we recommend movers. We recommend uh, Holloway people, a hall- Holloway companies and that sort of thing. So we're great for the logistics as well. Right. We'll come in and we'll sort and downsize everything and make sure everything is professionally packed, okay. supervise move day, you know, make sure everything gets from here to there. And uh, so much of it, as you know, as a realtor is really dealing with people's huge emotional responses to this kind right. of thing. Yes. It, they're leaving their homes. They're also, you know, they're recognizing they're, that they're a lot closer to the end than they are to right. the beginning. And that's always right. challenging. But moving alone, whatever age you are, is always such an upheaval. I don't call it relocation. I call it dislocation because you feel yeah. out of joint till you're completely settled in. True, true. So we'll settle, we'll unpack everything. So when you people, our clients walk in, it feels like home already. So it's Mm -hmm. all set. And then we clear out everything that was left behind using estate sales. Uh, Mm -hmm. We, we do, we do uh, online uh, auctions and estate sales Uh, and then donating as much as we possibly can. And then there's always some less things to be hauled away. We are hoarding specialists too. That's always interesting. That's, that's very good. So thank you for that very um, clear answer. There are a few things that I want to pick up from the answer mm-hmm. that, that you mentioned. Okay. So one yeah. of the things is the floor plan service. Yeah. So that's for moving, right? Just to mm-hmm. be clear, to be clear, you go yes. to the existing house, um, you kind of do an inventory of what they have. And then in the new house you have, okay, 
you're putting the couch here, you're putting the, the, the thing there. So people don't have to be on the day of the move. They're not in there like, okay, well, put the bed there, I guess, and put the nightstand over here. It's kind of like pre, so it's like a preparation, right? Absolutely. And also people are moving from the homes they've lived in for 30 and 40 and more years. We once moved somebody who was 89. He'd lived in that house his entire life to assisted living. And it's three bedrooms. It's got a garage. It's got an attic. And they're moving into a lovely one bedroom in Mm -hmm. in an assisted living community. There's a lot of downsizing that has to go. And so it's really important to know you know, really precisely where that piece of furniture can fit. Okay, so we have a sofa against that wall. Do we have room on either side right. for the end tables? That kind of thing. And again, it gets adjusted on move day, but at least there's a plan. And that way you don't have to pay the movers for additional time while you're figuring out where to put right. things. That makes sense. That makes sense. Now, let me ask you something else. So in this this scenario that we kind of like went over, there is the move involved. Now, sometimes there's no move involved, right? It's like right. maybe the adult children are from out of state, and they mm-hmm. are saying, you know, we have to sell our parents' house. We are just going to take the things that, you know, are kind of like dear to us, the rest, dispose of it as best you can. Yeah. So we talk about the stages, right? You mentioned we have, you know, whatever it's taken by the family. That's kind of mm-hmm. like, a, I guess, in the top rank. Then whatever is sold, that yep. would be like underneath, right, of value. Whatever is um, donated. Mm-hmm. And then the last is whatever goes to the landfill whatever yeah. is thrown away. Yeah. So how do you assist the client identifying the items? Because I know, you know, in, from, from personal experience talking to people in, in my business, people are like, you know, this family statue, it's so, it got to be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then you're like, well, maybe not. <laughs> so <laughs> there's always the reality check, right? Right, right. <laughs> and I ha- we have to explain, I have great staff. They're just superb. We have to explain to people that, whatever that painting or sculpture or piece of jewelry, whatever that cost before has to be tossed out the window. What that item is worth today is what someone will pay for it right now. Right. That's the market price. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how things shift around. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember when I first started, I've been doing this for 10 years. When I first started, there was this magnificent roll top desk from the 1800s. I think we managed to donate it finally. Wow. But I had thought, oh, this will go for so much money because it's so beautiful. It's antique. Mm-mm. Right. It's too big. People, right now, people are obsessed with pristine mid century modern furniture. Right. Uh, or maybe a Louis XIV share that's, again, in pristine condition. Mm-hmm. But everything else, when it comes to furniture, uh, is difficult to move. Because it just takes up so much room, say, in a thrift shop or an estate sale. Plus, people need trucks to move it around. So that's a big challenge. And most people, especially millennials and Gen Zers, they just want a table where they can eat at and also use it as a desk for the laptop. Right. So it's a lot different than it used to be. And it's just making people aware of that. And oftentimes, that gold jewelry you're convinced you have is actually plated. Hmm. so that it, it's hard so how Again, are these it, things determined like how do yeah. you i mean you cannot be an expert obviously on everything you know and when it comes to you know personal properties there's uh, nobody can really somebody needs to appraise things how do you go about you know enlisting the help of either auction houses or what is it basically that, who do you work with that can help you appraise the property and even determine like just like you said I mean, I am i wouldn't know if something is gold plated or solid gold, you know, like probably I would have a hard time identifying. How do you help the clients uh, understand that? Well, sometimes you do need to bring a, an appraiser in. And after mm-hmm. 10 years, we have such a deep list, list of resources whom we trust. Right. Uh, so we'll recommend a f- few of those and then the client can choose who they want to work with. Um but we actually partner with an online platform to do online estate, uh, online auctions oh, slash estate sales. I find auctions are really great because it, people want to drive the price up. So right. that's a good thing. You're not guessing and you're not, and also you're not personally haggling with people. It can be right. really difficult if you happen to be there mm-hmm. during an estate sale. There's something that means so, so much to you and somebody's trying to bid it down to like $2 right, and that right. can break your heart. 
Yes. We can also, I mean, honestly, we've had people who just say, just go do it. They're back East somewhere on the East Mm -hmm. coast. And they just, and so we go in and we just do it from there. Thank goodness for the age of technology. Cause if we come across something that we think, well, like photo albums, you know, are you sure you don't want these? And so we'll take photos or video and send them to them. And sometimes they'll say, oh yeah, we do want those. So it's all about communication. It's not really all about communication in terms of determining what has value. Mind you, we have a lot of experience in Mm -hmm. doing the online auctions and things. So we have a hunch. We also just know what categories will work. But we one time we worked with an estate that had a lot of antique mining equipment from the California mining days. And some of it was in great shape. Some was okay. You would not believe what some of those items went for. There are collectors out there Mm -hmm. and it's incredible when you're online. Now, mind you, they have to be local to come pick it up, but it's amazing. You find things you would never think of as valuable. They could be very valuable. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, you know, logistics is such an important aspect of what you do. It's like really getting all, all the, pieces together. So one of the things that you mentioned during the past answer, which which is I find interesting, it's like, you know, you see a photo album, you're like, are you sure you don't want this? Let's say somebody's remote. Um, how do you identify, you know, things that are important? Like, for instance, you know, they may not know that there is a, you know, a deed of the house that they're trying to sell. It's there or, or you know, um, the original plans and things like that. So how does your staff understand Like, look, this has got to stay behind. This is important paperwork. And this, on the other hand, you know, it's just, you know, print out of a novel. You could throw it away or whatever. (laughs) Uh, They're very skilled. uh, People, yes, you can go on TaskRabbit and find somebody to clear your home. It's not Mm -hmm. nearly as expert a service as what we offer because my staff recognizes deeds, trusts, wills all kinds of different financial instruments. And we set those aside and we make sure people know about them and send them to them. If they say, let go, okay, mm-hmm. fine. But we'll make sure we shred those items. Right. We're very keep careful with the information that we come across. This is very important information. Yeah, the, fact, the security is. aspect of it. Actually, we didn't talk about it. The privacy aspect. It's So when somebody says, this, you know, we don't need any of that or just send me a photo of it. That's all I need, you know, a copy, scan a copy and send it to me. Then the original, you make sure it's shredded and just doesn't go in a bin. Yes, that is so important. I don't care if it's an old bank statement from Washington Mutual, which has been sold, I think, a few times over. You still don't want that amount that's on there mm-hmm. being able to be cap found by someone else right. it's yeah. just a little we we err on the side of caution when it comes to shredding just to be careful that makes total sense now yeah. you've come you know you have a great reputation the attorneys Thank that i've you. worked with they always say that you know what a wonderful person you are to work with mm-hmm. and because you know some of the times i bringing up the attorneys when, when an attorney is involved sometimes the situation not all the time but sometimes it can be contentious mm-hmm. so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, and I think you briefly mentioned it, when people are splitting up or things are splitting, um, when uh, I've added in my experience, you know, between siblings, you know, I want this, no, I want that, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, the attorneys and all of that thing. Um, when it comes time to, you know, divide things up, let's say, um, what is, uh, I guess, the the best way to, is your role that of creating an inventory so then people can decide. Am I understanding that correctly? You're yes. In- now, sometimes <clears throat> mo- I would say most of the time people have already decided they have okay. a good idea what, what they're going to take or not. Maybe there's some discussion. Right. Uh, usually where the home inventories get involved when, what is when the beneficiaries are kind of far flung. Right. So different parts of the U.S. are overseas. Mm-hmm. And so that's when it helps to have, we can just do a photographic home inventory okay. so long as they're all getting along. Right. As you know all too well, frequently, people are grappling over things. And that's when you really have to have a very detailed inventory. We right. once did, I, I think our biggest one was about 430 plus pages. Oh, wow. Because when things get legal, you really need to document everything. Right. So that's where we really step in. And there are a couple of platforms out there that we can work with where once the inventory is done, there are mechanisms in place on the pla- on this on the platform where people can 
divide things both uh, from a fair financial aspect, but also from a fair sentimental point of view, because, you know, it's the things people argue over. Inevitably, the biggest fight is over grandma's worn out Betty Crocker cookbook. It's amazing what happens. Yeah. And the thing is, it's not really it's not about the object. Right. It's about the grief. Yeah. It's about all those old hurts from years before. Yeah. And and people aren't don't know how to process it, honestly, because we don't talk about it. Right. Yeah. We don't talk. That's one of my missions in life is to get us talking about it and planning for it so that later life can be a time that isn't painful. It's comfortable. It's safe. And it's planned for and cherished. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. You know, I spend a lot of time talking to estate planning attorneys and, you know, going over how it is important to communicate, you know, with your family, what your plans are so that it's clear. Because when you don't, I spend also a good amount of time in court confirming sales. And I, you know, when before they call up the sales, you get to see in court and see people, you know, essentially talk about you know their their issues and i always often make the joke you know unfortunately some of these some days it feels a little bit like a jerry springer episode in in in, you know in the courtroom so um, one of the things that you brought up talked about in your answer which i which actually i wanted to uh, point out is platforms and i think that's that's this is a good uh segue for us to talk about uh the age of technology and how is that impacted um, you know, the way you do your, your, your business, you know, like, um, you know, obviously I think that there are things now that, you know, you can rely, they've gotten better, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And now with the event of AI and, and all the things that people are, you know, talking about, how do you notice your business has changed over, say, you know, over the past 10 years, um, with some of the technology that you've been able to implement, even if it was already there and then you brought it in because you're like, oh, this works and this platform doesn't work. You know, we do that all the time. The CRM works. This one is terrible. You know, like mm-hmm. we continue to evolve. What has been, you know, some of the things that have been extremely um, helpful for Clear Home Solutions? In doing our work with our clients, mm-hmm. there that one of the great platforms is Max Sold. That's the company we partner with to do online auctions. So that's fantastic. There are also a few different home inventorying platforms. There's Pinventory mm-hmm. with a P, Pinventory. There's Fair Split. There's Home Zada, Home okay. Zada. And there are great platforms for either taking the photos and organizing them. And also when you need to, to do detailed, um, detailed descriptions and, and also determine who it's going to, who's going to get that. So those have been tremendously helpful with the home inventories. And then behind the scenes, we have our own you know, CRM, Love mm-hmm. Trello. And uh, also there's uh, Simware, S-M-M-Ware, because officially we're senior move managers, so okay. S-M-M-Ware, right. where that's the back end for the business uh, right. in terms of scheduling, human resources, all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. That makes total sense. One of the things you mentioned a little bit earlier is hoarding, you know, people that collect mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that... I've sold properties that I'm sure you've you've seen plenty of them where you walk in and you have like a tunnel and... and floor to ceiling. I once worked on a, on a fourplex that one unit was lived in and the other four units were just used as storage, you know? So, I mean, really, really like, I mean, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars in cost just to clear out the thing, you know? So um, when you find yourself with situations like this, what's the approach? Well, it kind of depends on where things are on the hoarding scale. There's Mm -hmm. an official clutter hoarding scale. You can look that up. It's on a scale of one to five. And it's not just the amount of stuff. It's also about what shape the home is in. Mm -hmm. Because frequently when you're getting up to a four or five, things don't work. The plumbing's out. I remember walking into one where all the lighting was jury rigged and trying to walk down the stairs. They were jiggly. Uh, when it gets to be that serious, a four or a five, we actually partner with a, a company called Stericlean. They come in, they're in the hazmat suits. And so they it. go in and pull everything out because there's vermin in there. Yes, it's, just, it's just, <clears throat> it's so hard to work in. It's far worse to have to live in. Yes, of course. Yeah. And so it's, they will bring everything out, but we will be outside sorting everything. 
so that we're catching anything like, oh, the wait, this is the deed of trust or, oh, this is the car title. Right. What's this? What's this? Oh, and frequently in those situations where you literally have gallon sized plastic bags full of keys. Oh, wow. And we'll probably usually find a couple, like a contract or two for a storage unit or two or three or four or five. <laughs> I, right. be, oh, it's amazing. Um, and it frequently we're dealing with a hoarding situation after somebody's passed because it, it, the beneficiaries don't want to deal with cleaning it out. Right. It's, it's, it's not only, it's like, it's such, it's so hard. There's so much hard physical work, but also just emotionally. Yeah. It's just, it's just too much, but we do sometimes end up working with the actual person who's hoarding. Um, and it's a challenge and we have our techniques to use. You cannot tell anybody, you know, certainly somebody who hoards, but anybody, no, you can't keep that. Why do you have all these things? They've got to go. This is trash. Of course. That's a great way to start a fight. <laughs> you have to step into these other p- person's shoes. If they're squabbling over, <laughs> I always have this handy, this back scratcher. Okay, address the back. This is how I, tra- I train my staff. Address that. It's like, okay, un- oh, got it. Handy. Let's keep that. And I know this is hard for you. Are you feeling, how are you feeling right now with all this? Do you want something to drink? Do you need to pre- <clears throat> And try to make, coax out of them the bigger anxiety behind the attachment to the back scratcher or whatever it may be. There's a bigger anxiety there. And it's, uh, and it's with all generations, it's really hard. And when you do have, there's the intergenerational squabbling, there's the squabbling between siblings. It, it's, it's a hard time for everybody. It's one of the biggest shifts in the life of an entire family, not just the older adults, but the adult children. It is so hard. Right. Because, and we don't talk about it because suddenly they're taking care of their parents. They're taking care of their own kids. They have a full-time job and no one's really addressing their needs at the, in this time. Right. They, we call it the sandwich generation, but actually I heard somebody call it the panini generation <laughs> as in squished. And that's so true. And there now because go. people are living longer, you actually have, they call them the club sandwich generation. <laughs> you have great grandparents too involved. So that's true. That's yeah. true. Um, let me ask you, what is an advice that you find that you give often to families when it comes to dealing with this particular situation? Is there something that, you know, you're like, okay, this is the tried and true things. And, you know, just let me share it with the, with the clients. Would you mind sharing with our audience? No, not at all. You mean in dealing with the the stuff of life? Is that what you're yeah, referring to? That's okay. right. Yes. Well, we already touched on the selling of things and making right the, the reality check that it's probably not worth you what you nearly what you think it is. So just be realistic, and you may have to end up donating all donating this, and then sometimes people just won't take you know, one wants it. And that's right. always so hard, especially if it's a big piece of furniture. We hate sending that to the landfill, but we have to. So it's that reality check if they want to sell items. Mm-hmm. Also, reassuring older adults when we're moving them into assisted living that pick, we tell them your favorite items are going to move with you. Don't worry about that. And what I tell them is to really single out your favorite and most useful items. Not everything that's useful sparks joy. You better believe I'm taking a back scratcher with me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can spark joy at moments or you know, pe- a pen or two or something. Right. But your favorite and most useful items. Those are the things that you really want to set aside and say, okay. Also with clothing, when you're sorting through clothing, and the thing is, I always say our biggest competition are family members and friends. Mm-hmm. And that's a great thing when you have right. that kind of support. We're here when you don't you you don't have that kind of support or people just don't have time or they're exhausted. Um, but if you're working, uh, either doing it yourself or you have help, uh, you, with clothing, it it's very it's one of the most emotional things because we wear it on our bodies, we wear it on special occasions. It mm-hmm. brings back so many memories. So when you're looking at your closet. Pull out the items that you wear all the time. Like, I know I'll wear that or th- things that you wore in the last month. Mm-hmm. Pull those out, set those aside, and then start sorting through the rest. 
If you haven't worn it in a year, especially if something casual, let it go. Don't think of tossing it. It's not tossing it. You'll probably donate it. So someone else will be very grateful for that, that that, that it's there. They can afford it because there are a lot of people who don't have much money. So who shop those thrift stores. Uh, so that's how you go through things. And again, if you haven't worn it, if it's a special occasion dress, so long as it still fits or that suit, it still fits and you haven't worn it in maybe three years. Okay. Cause sometimes, you know, there aren't a lot of weddings or what have yeah. you, but yeah, just be realistic. And above all, if it's, if there's a hole or a tear, it's compromised, just let it go because you're right. not going to repair it. Let it go. Uh, And one final thing is uh, if you have a large group of anything, for example, oh, I have a great example, Rose, she and her husband had gotten married and they had nothing. But when I met her, when we met her, they'd had a, they were very, they'd become very successful. There's beautiful home and they travel a lot. And one of the things she liked to collect when their travels were ceramic pictures, P-I-T-C-H-E-R-S, pictures. And so their fireplace, they had a mantle and a hearth that ran the length of the room. Wow. And they were both covered with all these ceramic pictures. Obviously, (laughs) all of these were not going to fit into her new home and assisted living. So I asked her to pick out, I asked her to pick out 12, because I figure if we're lucky, she might get down to 20. Well, the next visit, she was down to about 15, I think. And what was amazing was the collection she had looked like confetti. It was amazing, colorful, beautiful, shiny because of ceramics. But when I saw the group she'd picked out, I could see how each one was a work of art. Mm -hmm. And so that's the trick, whether it's dozens of ceramic pictures or you have six red sweaters or as my father did, like five uh, gray suits, identical colors. Like, let's trim that back. Let's trim that. Maybe get it down to two, three, two, one, maybe. So it's really thinking that way. And above all, when you're working with someone, just being patient and it's going to take longer than you ever imagined. We sometimes get calls from people. I mean, we'll get it done, but you know, they have 10 days to move and they haven't done a thing. And they're moving out of a home of 30 years because right. it, somehow they or their adult child thought, oh, it'll be fast and easy. It's like, mm. yeah, yeah, you can come sense. in and just bolt, you know, t- you know, just get everything done. Boom, 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 boom. But there's no room for the emotions that come up. And it's so stressful. And it's really not good to put older adults through that level of stress when you're relocating them because they can that get very sense. confused if there's even a bit of dementia it exacerbates that kind of if, it, if if the transition isn't handled carefully, respectfully, compassionately, that dementia is just going to get so much worse. So is, yeah. something to be, be aware of. That is true. That is true. Thank you for sharing that. Let's talk about clear home solutions. I mean, you know, first of all, great website. I love it. You know, thank I, you. I, I, oh, thank yeah, you so much. Very, very informative. So, uh, so uh, for my audience, if anybody needs, you know, definitely please go visit the website, clearhomesolutions.com. Clear home That's yep. right. <laughs> so let's talk about your journey to clearhomesolutions.com. Mm-hmm. Um, how did this interest start? Mm-hmm. And is this what you wanted to do when you were a little girl? And did oh, you no, I never. <laughs> oh, no, I never imagined. I was, I was going to have my own company. Are you kidding me? Um, well, I get the best way to explain it. And frequently people come into any kind of senior service, especially if it's going to be your company from their own personal experience. In my case, uh, my mom died when she was young. She's only 58, but dad made it to 90. He never remarried. She was the love of his life. And he was back in Buffalo and I live here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and I had my own eco handbag line at that time. actual business of fashion is just so cutthroat. It ain't fun. I was what we call the DAA in the family, the designated adult. I'm sure many of your listeners are very much the same. Um, So I was flying back and forth. And for obvious reasons, the bag business took a a big hit. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, so as my father was 
on on the runway, ready to depart, uh, very close to that, I thought, well, okay, either I I resurrect the handbag line, but it's just it was I I just it wasn't very fulfilling, or mm-hmm. I find something else, especially in the later life sphere, because I loved what I was learning about that and mm-hmm. being of service to my dad and other another relative down in Florida. And I recognized too, from a business standpoint, that market was huge and would only grow. Right. So I said, okay, what's the niche that isn't chock full of people already? And I found this niche of dealing with the stuff of life, uh, th- those treasures of a lifetime and all the other stuff that goes with it. And I launched Claire Home Solutions 10, 10 and a half years ago, never looked back. Wow. Yeah. That's wonderful. It's Very- been, it's an industry that's been very, very good to me. Yeah, that that is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, and as I said, you have a you have a stellar reputation, so that that helps. You know, obviously you've been doing a good job. Um, now I want to do the back of the business card kind of a thing. Sure. Um, so I have a list of uh, thirty questions. I just want you to pick one number between one and thirty, so you'll be responsible for the question I ask you. <laughs> you know, in a fourteen. Sense. Fourteen. All right. What's your favorite city and why? Oh my goodness. Yeah, you're talking to somebody who's traveled to every continent. Oh, that's nice. So, yeah, I mean, just about every place has its own amazing quality. I will tell you, Antarctica is remarkable because everything, it's just a place of great majesty, the the mountains and all the snow. And what, what people don't know is when you get around a rookery of penguins, it really smells really <laughs> yes it really stinks um i love munich for all its museums loved berlin um uh, santiago is wonderful toronto is great i grew up in buffalo or a border town i love my hometown i re- there's so much history there so much great art- architecture from the turn of the 19th to 20th centuries that's been well preserved Great food. Mm-hmm. Just got to tout, tout my city. Love Seattle. It's so beautiful. And the people are wonderful there. So much to do. It's hard to pick. I can't pick a favorite. All love right. London. Well, you know, this is great. I love, you know, from that question, finding out that you went to Antarctica. That's that's pretty amazing, you know, just in and in, in of, in of, of itself. So um, it's been before I let you go, this is an important thing. You know, we're going to have your contact information in our show notes. But what mm-hmm. is the best way for our audience to get a hold of you? Either by phone okay. or you can also contact us through our website. Perfect. Clearhomesolutions.com. We'll say it yeah, one more you time. You can just go info, I-N-F-O, at clearhomesolutions.com. That's great because that will get to us and Perfect. we'll get you all taken care of. Thank you so much. Marty, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show. I love your oh. energy. You're so, you, you know, it's thank you for gracing oh. it with your with with your uh, knowledge and 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 personality. I really appreciate it. Oh, Matthias, right back to you. This has been delightful. You're great to talk to. Thank you oh. so much for the honor of being on your podcast. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining the show. And we will see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Probate Realtor Show. Find more episodes and interact with us at probaterealtor.la. That's probaterealtor.la. Listen, ask questions, and get results. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The Probate Realtor Matias Baker Mazzucci is a licensed real estate broker in California, DRE number 02054763. Any legal information provided is for informational purposes only and not for the purpose of providing legal advice. Contact an attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular legal issue or problem. We make no guarantees as to the accuracy of any information. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.